Brian Middleton back in the Action Sports Shack studios in Jacksonville. Brent Morton, Casey Kurtz here on Radio Row in Phoenix, Arizona, Super Bowl 57 with Brent and friends. And right now our next friend is Michael Silver, and you know him well from covering the NFL and talking about your Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, in fact, I still remember the story you did on draft. You got a sneak peek behind the scenes on uh, one of those draft nights, didn't you? That was, that was really fun. I believe that was uh, the night uh, that Dante Fowler Jr. was – selected unfortunately uh, yeah well, <laughs> it was unfortunate when in his first play in mini yeah it was he, he tore his ACL yeah. but uh yeah I remember uh I remember a lot about that uh, uh then uh scouting assistant Leslie Ladd walked into my live shot she was uh, coming out of the draft room and I was right outside it and gave this like great you know like it was a great comedic timing. Someone captured it. <laughs> that was really fun. Uh, I, you know, I spent a lot of time with uh, the whole crew and Gus Bradley, Dave Caldwell, uh, the cons. It was really fun. And uh, I'm really happy for the Jags. Uh, after 2021, uh, the year from hell, they, they deserve all the good things. <laughs> you said it, uh, and I know you were critical of it, uh, the Urban Meyer stuff. And I mean, Did you just know it wasn't going to work, or it's just everything you've heard since then that's like, I can't believe that happened and, and it went down the way it did? Well, you start hearing things early, like the infamous what have you ever won meeting. Mm -hmm. And you, you hear those things, and you're like, come on, man. It, it's the NFL. Show some respect. And I, I know Urban Meyer had a lot of success in college, and uh, I, you just – you know, the NFL is a, a different animal, and we've seen a lot of college coaches not really get that. Um, those college coaches who haven't gotten it have tended in their favor not to kick their kicker, um, not to bounce on a flight home and just go off uh, to their own hood and go to a bar with a young blonde and hang out. So optics were terrible. Uh, didn't feel great in the building. I, I have a podcast on the volume called Open Mic. Had Marvin Jones on. I asked him, when did you know? When did you guys know it was bad? And he said, honestly, like pretty much the first meeting. And he said, every meeting, though, he goes, we're not idiots. We have phones. We can fact check in real time. And we weren't hearing a lot of uh, you know truthful things. Well, Mike Silver with us uh, from Bally Sports and, and uh, talking about a new app we're going to get into in just a couple of moments too which is really cool stuff with an old friend from jacksonville that's helping uh yes. create it uh but to stay on that point for a moment we were just talking about doug peterson he's a finalist tonight for the head coach of the year in the nfl and yeah. i think he did the best job in the nfl and i said this going back to december and there were a lot of good coaching jobs in the nfl but he didn't nobody had to start from where doug started but at the same time you can make the case that they couldn't wait for the next guy to get in Right. And and he was he had everybody's attention. Got the Lombardi. He's he's totally different than Urban. And it feels like those players like Marvin Jones, who had lived through that, just couldn't wait to run through a wall for the next guy. I mean, he's such a pro and he's such a you know, he's he's there's no BS about Doug. I've known him for a long time, covered him as a player for years. Uh, you know, he, he's a good dude. He's a pro. He obviously has the credibility of having one. And he was hungry. That year out, you know, got him. Uh, you can tell he was fired up during his year off because he showed up at training camp uh, visiting Frank Reich wearing Colts gear. He showed up uh, at, at, with the Bears to see Matt Nagy wearing Bears gear. He's like, hey, yo, I'm still I'm still here. I'm coming back. And, and he was the hotel maid cleaning up after Led Zeppelin checked out in the 70s. I mean, let's face it. It was, you're right, it, it, by comparison, it was going to be good. But it's one thing to be like, okay, good, it's not a disaster. And another thing to take a team, especially one that gets off to a slow start, and get them to the point where they can win an elimination game to get into the playoffs. And, you know, to come back from 27 down in a playoff game, that's, that's epic. Not only take the whole team, but when you look at what Doug Peterson did with Trevor Lawrence. Oh, yeah. I mean, just from – it's night and day from where Urban Meyer I, had him tonight. I viewed this as Trevor Lawrence's rookie year. Yeah. I'm giving him a complete pass. It probably was worse than having – you know, it's probably like a negative year. Some people in the building felt that way. Yeah. And so, yeah. I, and I think, Doug, the best thing he could do for Trevor is just, like, keep it real. Keep it chill. Like, hey, Trevor, man. It's okay. People throw picks. You should have seen the picks I threw, you know. Yeah. And uh, it, it's going to be good. It's it's uh, That division, as you know, is changing rapidly. We don't know what the Colts are going to do, but, uh, you know, that's a, I think that's a rebuild. 
uh, you know, Houston, uh, great hire at D'Amico Ryans, but they're, they're in the middle of a teardown. And, you know, we'll see what happens with Tennessee. They've done a great job. But, you know, when the GM gets fired, uh, the head coach seemingly wins a power play, and you lose your last seven games to fall out of the playoffs, uh, alarm bells should be going off. I ask you this because you know the Jags' uh, situation really well and in tune to it. Not all the national guys do, but you do. I'm Michael Silver with us, uh, of course, right here on ESPN 690. And Trent Baalke a year ago compared to Trent Baalke now. Uh, what are the league circles saying about him? And, I mean, how – you talk – I don't know that they give comeback people of the year, but he's certainly in the mix because I give a lot of credit to Doug. I just don't know how you can't give some credit to Trent. Every free agent move they made, Mike, worked out. Yeah, you got to give a lot of credit, and I was certainly one of the ones uh, – you know, I, I wasn't doubting to, – to be fair, I'm not one of those people who doubts Trent's uh, – talent evaluation skills he's really good um i was worried about the managerial intra-organizational part of it and part of it i wasn't even mad at trent i just i thought the cons uh put themselves in a weird position coming off of urban but kind of insisting that trent be the guy it, it takes you out of the running for certain candidates um and you know it didn't go great with him and harbaugh which is not just trent's fault but <laughs> I think just the look from afar, I was kind of like, why are you doing that? I mean, you can find another GM if you have to. Uh, but, you know, to Trent's credit, it's been good from what I can tell. And, yeah, he, he is a very good talent evaluator. He has a lot of conviction in what he believes in. And when you make right moves, you make right moves. And people like Mike Silver have to go on <laughs> radio in your market and go, Trent Balky, I apologize. I was wrong. Hey, I you're not the only one. That. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all took a shot at that. Uh, let me ask you this one in regards to Doug Peterson. And he didn't get a lot of interviews. Like the Jags were one of the few teams that yeah, interviewed him. Weird. They Crazy. They interviewed him early, then come back to him and make the right hire. And then this offseason, you see Frank Wright get a job. Do you think what Doug Peterson did with this team kind of made waves around the NFL saying, maybe we should go back to some of the older coaches versus the young, hot offensive name? It's a great question. And, and I was surprised Doug didn't get more immediate action. And the only thing I could think of is that, you know, People, I, I actually reported on it a lot, but a lot of people don't really understand how Philly got so weird and toxic so quickly. And there were a lot of different theories, one of which was, oh, they lost Frank Reich. He was the secret sauce. And Frank Reich's great, but a lot of it is, you know, there was a lot. And quarterback was a lot of it. And different factions of the organization. And by the way, Jeffrey Lurie, great owner. So I don't, it's not as simple as, it, it was complex. And Doug is not a person who walks around making you feel his power and demanding i gotta have this and everyone's gotta know i'm in charge doug is an open guy so when they say listen to our analytics guy in your headset he might have something to say before this call doug's not gonna be like i don't you know doug's like okay fine and he, and he managed it well but it just got so weird toward the end that i and, and remember the you know the optics of that game where they put sudfeld in and yeah. it, it looked like they yeah. were trying to lose yeah which probably wasn't doug's call I, I just think there was uncertainty about that and if anything this just affirms whatever was going on over there doug peterson could coach yeah it wasn't his fault all right hey let's talk about this app gonna get our buddy josh carney yeah. in and it's st augustine guy by the way so uh we like that and this new app could really maybe espn 690 brenton friend's going to be on this thing someday right the stunt tell us a little bit about it i mean i'm super into it i'm just getting into it but first of all i think we can all agree and some of us are te you know some of us are super annoying on social media <laughs> and opinionated <laughs> and political and i'm not political uh, I, uh, it's just annoying I, i'm ter <laughs> I, I i make everyone angry but uh, I think we can all agree that the prevailing uh, social media app, Twitter, is kind of a Twitch show right now, and, and I don't say that in a good way. And uh, so many of my colleagues and fans, everyone has said to me, can we go somewhere? Can we just have a place for sports people to go and have kind of our own community and start this over in a cooler way like what back how it used to be and so when i found out about the stunt i was like oh i think we got it and um so i'm super excited to get into it uh, i think the early users will kind of inform the uh community and figure out which way it goes i think it's gonna kind of have a duval uh you know <laughs> 
it's you know a little bit of a Duval touch there, as you mentioned, because of Josh. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be all over it at Mike Silver um, at the stunt, which is also my Twitter handle. But and I hope that someday soon I could be like. Just follow me on the stunt. Yeah, that would be nice. The stunt, you can download the app, by the way. I've already done it. I'm going to check it out more, too. I mean, we just kind of uh, got into this conversation the last 24 hours or so, but I love the idea about it, love the concept of it. And also, I mean, everybody used to follow you on the, around the NFL circles. You're at Valley Sports. How, how's that working out for you in, in your professional moves? you got the podcast going. you got yeah. this going. What, what else? i got a bunch of jobs. I'm a columnist at the San Francisco Chronicle, so I was very 40 heavy this year. Uh, I started out at a very young age as a 49er beat writer in 1989, so I've come full circle. Uh, most recent guest on my podcast on the volume, Open Mic, uh, that's called Cowards Network, was Joe Montana. So, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a good, I covered the 89 Niners to start. He and I go way back. And then, yeah, Bally Sports, we're doing a bunch of stuff here and trying to do some side projects. And, yeah, so I, I'm, uh, I, I, you know, I had one main employer for a long time, Sports Illustrated for 13 years, Yahoo for six, NFL Network for eight. I like having a bunch of balls in the air, and I like having uh, the ability to go to a new social media platform, check it out. You can go to thestunt.com and uh, see if uh, we can rewrite uh, social media uh, history. I love the idea of it. It's a great concept, the stunt. Go ahead, download the app. Michael Silver, thanks for taking a few minutes talking some Jags football and everything you've got going on. Oh, who's your pick? By? You like the Eagles or, or the uh, Chiefs? feels super even to me. Uh, when it's even, then I, st- I tend to gravitate toward Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. I'm not sure if the Eagles are front runners. They have not had to gut out games that come from behind. I know the Chiefs can. Uh, on the other hand, their lines are so good. It feels super even. I would I would skew Chiefs because of my hopes. But let's say it like this. The Eagles won't win the Super Bowl because they don't have Doug Peterson. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Ah, very good. That's a good play right there. Back to the hometown in Jacksonville, Florida.